There's one stat that won't show up on paper. You can't do research and digging to find it, and it's going to hurt Ohio State dramatically. It's not their fault, but it's the cold hard truth. Ah, 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 ah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Week 9 Preview. And yeah, it's safe to say this is going to be a very... And I mean a very interesting one at that. Let's just say that your boy Matt might be picking a couple upsets here and there. We're not doing no intro, no none of that. I'm jumping straight into this because I want to get into it and I know you guys want to get into it as well. Come on now, don't play dumb. You know how we started out and that's what our 11 a.m. games first. To get the ball rolling, we're going to talk about this one. Not many people are thinking it's going to be close and maybe it isn't. We got TCU in West Virginia. I said maybe it isn't. I should have said maybe it won't be. You get what I'm trying to say. This is a tale of two different stories. The Mountaineers, they've had a rather disappointing season and I think that's a nice way to say it many people thought they were going to be good with JT Daniels coming in and it hasn't been that it's been the complete opposite it goes without being said you see their record they're three and four however even though they are three and four even though they haven't looked good a lot all throughout this season I still think they have talent to win games like these this team hasn't lived up to or played up to their potential all throughout this season now whether you want to blame the head coach the players the staff Whoever, that's up for you guys to decide. Here's what I'm here to tell you. I've watched this West Virginia team probably more than anybody else, and they can beat teams like TCU. For that to happen, though, everything's going to have to go right for West Virginia, and they're going to have to play the best game of their life. Can they do that? Yes, but will they do it? That's a different story. It goes around being said, JT Daniels, he's going to have to play amazing just to keep up with this lethal TCU offense. I expect a little to probably zero defense being played in this game, and it's probably going to be something like TCU 52 and West Virginia 45. I'm not going to pick West Virginia to pull off the upset, but I think it will be a closer game than what many people think. And looking at the Vegas odds right here, they're only, TCU is only, a 7.5 favorite. Like I said, I got TCU winning, but I wouldn't be shocked if West Virginia pulls out the upset. They could catch TCU sleeping. One of our other ranked 11 a.m. games, we got Notre Dame, Syracuse. Nobody cares about these teams. Notre Dame's overrated. Syracuse, they're also overrated. It's probably going to be something like 17 to 10. I guess I might as well get my prediction. We got Syracuse. But finally, moving on to the main topic of this video, the main game that I'm looking forward to the most, we got Ohio State, or actually the Ohio State, my fault, and Penn State. Woo, 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 woo. You better buckle your seatbelt for this one. What does everybody say? What have I said all throughout the season? I refuse to talk about Ohio State until they play somebody. And guess what? It's all the way up until week nine, and they're finally playing somebody. So I got to talk about them. Let me get this out there first. I think Ohio State is a great football team, but it's hard for me to justify how great or elite they are because of the competition they've played. For example, I know what to think about Tennessee. I know what to think about Alabama or Georgia because they've played some great teams. Ohio State hasn't. Maybe that's not a great way to say it. Let me put it into a better perspective. If I want to say, for example, that Georgia is the best team in the country, I have facts and evidence to go with that statement, and I can validate that statement. One way I can validate it is say, hey, look what they did to Oregon, and Oregon's been on fire lately. You see what I'm saying? Same thing for Tennessee. I can say, hey, Tennessee beat Alabama, and Alabama's a really good team. But, and I have a big but, I cannot do that for Ohio State. I have no leverage if I want to try to say Ohio State's the number one team in the country. How can I back that up? Yeah, you look good. You're blowing out these teams. The offense looks as great as ever, but who are you playing? And I get it 100% Ohio State fans. I know what you're about to say. Well, Matt, we can't control who we play. Yes, I understand that, and I would say I'm a reasonable person, and I'm not going to try to knock you for that. As a matter of fact, let me clarify on that. I'm not knocking you for it. It's more so of I just can't validate putting you at number one. Moving along, I think you get my point with that, but now finally, after this game on Saturday, Saturday, I have something to look at and say, okay, Penn State, they're a decent slash good team. I can validate putting Ohio State number one if, and that's a if they win this game. You know Matt likes his fun facts. I was doing some digging and research last night getting ready for this video, and you know what I found out, and this shocked me? Ohio State is second in the country in total defense. Yes, that's right. You heard me correctly. No, this isn't a fluke or anything. Ohio State is second in total defense right behind Illinois. Ohio State is only giving up, on average, 239.9 yards per game. Pretty impressive. Granted, and I think you all know where I'm about to go with this, you're playing the Big Ten, and the Big Ten has just terrible offenses. 
On the flip side of the ball for Ohio State, they have the fourth best offense in the country. Not too bad, not too bad. Top five in total defense and offense. Can't ask for much more. To go on top of that, here's another fun fact for you. Penn State is 1-9 against Ohio State in their last 10 matchups, their last win coming in 2016. In this ballgame, Ohio State also, and it's not even debatable, has the best quarterback and better weapons at the wide receiver positions. And all in all, when you want to break it down, I'm not going to do all that, but player for player, Ohio State is far superior superior than Penn State. So with all of that stuff I just said, it sounds like and looks like, on paper at least, Penn State doesn't stand a chance and Ohio State is going to mop the floor with them. And that's what most people think is going to happen. I hate to break the news to you, but I'm not most people. There's one stat that won't show up on paper. You can't do research and digging to find it, and it's going to hurt Ohio State dramatically. That one stat, or my bad, it's not even a stat, that one thing that's going to hurt Ohio State in this ballgame is the fact that they're not battle-tested. It's not their fault, but it's the cold hard truth. They've never been tested this season and it's crazy that they've got up to week nine without playing in a close game i'll show you the scores right here notre dame ohio state first game of the year 21 10 yeah kind of deceiving it was never in question if you watch the game you know what i'm talking about ohio state had control going down a list here 45 12 77 21 52 21 49 10 49 20 54 10 last week this team hasn't faced adversity what happens if penn state goes out there and they're up 10 nothing because C.J. Stroud threw a pick six or a fumble like last week against Iowa. My biggest concern for Ohio State in this one is one, not only is it on the road, but it's an 11 a.m. game. I don't care what any athlete tells you, none of these college football players can get hype and excited for 11 a.m. games like they can for 7 p.m. games. It's not going to happen. If they tell you otherwise, they're straight up lying. It's not just college football, it's human nature. You're not going to be excited at 7 a.m. as you are at 7 p.m. I think Ohio State is going to come out slow. They're going to come out groggy, just like last week against Iowa. When you look at the score, you wouldn't have thought Ohio State came out bumpy in the first quarter, but they did. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, they do that same stuff against Penn State, they might be in some trouble. I'm going to be brutally honest with all of you, and I think we all know this. You're not going to stop Ohio State from scoring. They will score. Penn State's defense defense and really any defense in the country isn't built to stop Ohio State. But here's where things can get interesting. Here's where Penn State can have a chance to win this game. I can guarantee you the defensive coordinator in practice this week, it's always saying, bend but don't break. I'm going to say it again, bend but do not break. You're going to give up these 30, 40, 50 yard plays, but can you hold on to field goals? That's going to be the game changer. If you can hold on to two, three, four field goals, and who knows, maybe they miss some of them, you're going to have a better chance of giving up all these touchdowns. If Penn State can keep them in the low 30s, high 20s, they have a shot to win. On the contrary, if you don't get stops, if you don't hold them to field goals and they get into the high 30s and low 40s, it's GG. Penn State's offense, they're not built to score that much. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. Did somebody say offense for Penn State? I think they did. Speaking of offense, that leads me to my next point perfectly. We got to talk about the X Factor in this game, and he goes by the name of Sean Clifford. Make no mistakes about it. This is the X Factor. If Sean Clifford has a decent or bad game, you're not going to win. You're not going to have a chance. But if he has a good game, a great game, or an elite game, yeah, you can win. I'm going to give you one of the best examples ever. Two weeks ago against Michigan, Sean Clifford played horrible. He was 7 for 19, a buck 20 through the air, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. He played bad, and guess what? Penn State lost 41 to 17. But here's the thing in that ball game. I think the score is somewhat deceiving because in the first half, it was close. I watched that game, and I even went back and watched some parts of it for film and stuff. That game wasn't as bad as the score makes it out to seem. I'm not going to say it was close, but it more so felt like a 31 to 17 game. That's what I'm saying though. I want y'all to think about this. Sean Clifford played bad in that game and they were in it. Fast forward in time to last Saturday against Minnesota, Sean Clifford played great. He was 23 for 31, 300 yards and four touchdowns to only one interception, and they destroyed Minnesota. I literally cannot show you a better example. You see what happens when Sean Clifford plays bad, and you see what happens when he plays good. If he plays bad, Penn State's going to struggle. If he plays good or great, they can beat a lot of these teams. And guess what? I'm calling it. I think Mr. Sean Clifford is going to have the game of his life. He's going to have his signature win at Penn State, and they're going to pull off the upset. It is time. Sean Clifford, I want y'all to really think about this if you're a Penn State fan. He hasn't had that game of his life quite yet. Now, don't get me wrong. He's had some great games, but I think he's missing that one big time one that he's going to be remembered for. This is it. This is the one. I'm calling it, and I know it's risky, but that describes Sean Clifford's career. He's either going to play really, really good or really, really bad. No in-betweens. 
I got Penn State pulling this one out 31 to 27, and I feel confident in that score. It's Clifford time, baby. The Ohio State is going down this Saturday. Moving on down here to our 230 games, we got a CBS matchup with Florida and Georgia. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. I hope it's close just for entertainment value. But Florida is a crap show. They're on fire. That place is burning down, and the last team you want to play when your team is burning down is Georgia. Here's why I think it's not going to be necessarily close. I don't know how Florida is going to score on Georgia, and I also don't know how Florida is going to stop Georgia. The one part about the Georgia offense this year is that I think they're better than last year, and that's scary. Because remember, everybody was talking about, including myself, hey, the defense lost all these players. They're probably going to fall off. And if anything, I think actually, according to the numbers, the defense is slightly better this season. Do I believe that player for player they're better than last year's team? No, but by the analytics, they are. Florida is a 22.5 underdog, which is a lot in this game, and I don't really really think they're going to cover. I got Georgia by a lot. I mean, we all know how this goes for Georgia. There's nothing really fancy to talk about. Stetson Bennett's going to throw all them bubble screens to the tight ends, and they're going to do all the work. I expect Georgia to pounce on them in the first quarter, and Florida's going to get a dose of that run game. If you don't stop it, here's the thing about Kirby Smart that I like. If you cannot stop the run game, he won't pass. I don't think Florida's going to stop them. The only way they have a slight chance is if Anthony Richardson has a great game. Maybe he does have a good game. I hope it's close. I got Georgia. Also, moving along here, I feel like Oklahoma State's playing in so many ranked games recently. We got Oak State versus Kansas State. Weirdly enough, and this is why I say Oak State is a weird team to keep up with, they're a one and a half point underdog. I get why they're an underdog. It is at Kansas State, but I got Oak State pulling this one out. Moving on down here, we got Wake Forest and Louisville. I don't think it's going to be close. Give me Wake Forest. And here's an intriguing one that I'm going to keep up with. At 2.30, we also got Illinois and Nebraska. The only reason I'm keeping up with it is because of the Nebraska situation. I know this year is already a waste and it's over, but if they can win this game, that program might start heading in the right direction. I'm not saying they're going to return to the glory days, but it's always fun to watch Nebraska in their home games because even with them being sorry this year in 3-4, and four, they're going to sell out. Moving on to our 6 p.m. games. Oh, man. This is going to be an exciting one if you're in the Southeast. We got Kentucky and the Volunteers. There's not a hotter team in the country than Tennessee. Their offense is explosive, and I'm actually excited to break this one down. I'm always excited for games, but this one just really intrigues me because I'm not too sure what to expect. Kentucky has one of the top quarterback prospects in the NFL draft in Will Levis, and Tennessee has my Heisman frontrunner, Hendon Hooker. I'm not going to sit up here and rave on Tennessee. I've already made plenty of videos talking about their offense and the team this week. We know how good Tennessee is, but how good is Kentucky? Can they even keep this one close? Can they keep up with Tennessee? I talked about this in a video earlier this week, and I think some of you may remember. I said Kentucky has one of the slowest offenses in the country, and Tennessee has one of the fastest. It's just two totally different teams. Kentucky's defense hasn't allowed more than 24 points in 11 straight games. The funny part about that is the last time they given up more than 24 points was last year at Tennessee when they gave up 45. Something's going to have to give here, and I see a lot of Tennessee fans are nervous about this game, and I've also seen Kentucky fans think they got a good shot to pull the upsets, but I don't see it. I think Tennessee is going to run away with this game. It's not going to be close. I got to win it by like 25 or 30. I'm sorry. I get Kentucky has a great quarterback in Will Levis, but their offensive line sucks. And I don't care who you are. You can be Tom Brady, but if your offensive line can't block and your receivers can't get open, you're not going to look good out there. I'm not saying Kentucky won't score. They may score 28, 35 points. But how are you going to stop Tennessee's offense? I got to remind people, Alabama has a good defense. They're not great, they're good, and Tennessee scored 52. You can do what you want with this information. I hope it's close, but I don't think it will be. And last but not least, let's run through these last few real quick. We got Michigan State and Michigan in 630. Maybe this could be a sneaky close game, but I don't see it either. I think Michigan is going to blow them out. Michigan State sucks. As to why Michigan State is paying Mel Tucker like $90 million blows my mind. And then the last game that intrigues me, and I think it may intrigue some of y'all, we got Ole Miss and Texas A&M. Texas A&M is a dumpster fire. Not going to get into that mess. I think we may talk about them in tomorrow's video. And Ole Miss is coming off of that loss against LSU. Ole Miss is a two-point favorite on the road. I just don't understand how anyone in their right mind could go with Texas A&M to win this game. Although Texas A&M has talent, and some people may feel like they can put it together later in the season, I just don't know how anyone could pick them. I'm going to go with the lane trainer Ole Miss, and that wraps up our recap. Let me know your thoughts down below. I know you guys are going to let me know about that Ohio State and Penn State game, but yeah, uh, right away, baby!